Y'all, we're making pizza again. Come on. Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the random web series where we find and test the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, we're gonna be tackling pizza crust yet again. Stay tuned. All right, guys, this is not a repeat. You are here for part two of my massive, epic, low-carb pizza crust battle. If you missed the first episode, I'm gonna leave a link here up, up on the screen and in the video description below. Be sure to check that out because we tried the famous chicken crust pizza, we tried the traditional fathead crust pizza, and we also did an almond crust pizza. Um, so this one, uh, this video, we're gonna do three different ones that you guys suggested in the comments below from the other video. The first recipe we're going to do is the best low-carb pizza crust, and this is by Papa G's Low Carb Recipes. The second recipe is the famous carnivore pizza crust by the inimitable Maria Emmerich over at mariamindbodyhealth.com. And to much uh, of your recommendations, we are going to tackle the keto pizza in 10 minutes, better than fathead crust keto pizza. And this is by Joe Duff over at um, thedietchefs.com. So be sure to check them out using the links down below. Now, before we begin, I need to give a huge thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Thrive Market is an online marketplace on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everybody. You can shop for thousands of your favorite name brand products at tremendous savings from traditional retail prices. Uh, and what's nice about their catalog is that you can sort it by the things that matter most to you, the values that matter most to you, whether that's um, low carb and keto like us, or it could be paleo or raw, non-GMO, vegan, whatever it is that you're searching for in your healthy life, uh, you can sort their entire catalog by those specifications. Now, like a lot of big box discount stores, there is a membership fee to join Thrive Market, but what's nice is they also have a give back program. For every single membership that they sell, they also give one away to someone who needs access to healthy food. Um, a, a low income family, teachers, a veteran, um, first responders, somebody that can really benefit uh, from affordable, healthy products. They also give away a membership for each they sell. Now, uh, you can do a one month membership that it's $9.95 five a month if you just want to try it out or you can do like I do and get the one year membership uh, they charge it all at once but it gets the price down to like around five bucks a month and I know that I will absolutely save at least five dollars a month by ordering from them in fact most Thrive Market customers save about $32 per order. They also ship everything in carbon neutral packaging from their carbon neutral warehouses. So you, then, you know that getting this stuff to you is not taking a toll on the environment. So thank you Thrive Market for, for sponsoring this video. I want you guys to use the link down here on the screen. It'll also be in the video description below. If you use that link, you will get 25% off your first order plus a free gift. And that 25% off is off of the already really discounted prices that Thrive Market offers. So again, thank you Thrive Market. It's sponsorships like yours that keeps channels like mine on the air and I really appreciate it. All right, let's make some pizza. All right, guys, so let's get started on this first recipe. This is by Papa G's Low Carb, his YouTube channel, and it's the best low carb pizza crust. This was highly rec requested in the, uh, the, the last video in the comment section. Now, I'm gonna leave a link to, uh, to his channel here, and if you're new here, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Um, but those of you that have been here any length of time know that I don't give exact measurements for these recipes. These are not my recipes, I'm just here to test them, the people that did do the hard work of creating these, they deserve the traffic. So I'm gonna send you to the link here on the screen. It'll also be in the video description below and in the pinned comment below, all the recipes that we test here today. So go visit them, uh, give them some traffic and, uh, that they deserve, and you'll find the exact measurements for what we're making here. So this is pretty easy, and this, like our chicken crust in the last video, this pretty much is a single serving pizza, I believe. The entire crust is about one and a half net carbs. Let's get started on this. It's pretty easy, to be very honest. It starts with uh, ground pork rinds. And this, um, I just put them in the, the food processor earlier and just whizzed them up and, until we got the appropriate amount. So in those go. And we're also gonna add in some grated Parmesan cheese. And specifically he says, 
the canned stuff, you know, the canned green can of grated Parmesan cheese. Yes, I know that that is not true Italian Parmigiano Reggiano, but a lot of people developing low carb recipes use it because it kind of becomes a substitute for flour uh, because it is so finely grated. And I know before, I'm just gonna throw this in, before anybody comes in the comments and says, there's sawdust in that, um, Yes, these things are cut with cellulose, vegetable cellulose. It's just a minuscule amount in the whole jar that's an anti-caking agent. So if you don't want to eat cellulose, natural cellulose, which may or may not come from a tree, um, <laughs> if you don't want to eat that, don't. Use, use whatever you need to use, but I'm going to follow the recipe exactly as he's written it because that's the only fair way for me to test a recipe. Also, a little bit of shredded mozzarella cheese and he puts in some garlic powder and some Italian seasoning. In that goes. And then two beaten eggs. And that is it, guys, that is it. And um, rightly so, he specifies that uh, there's no added salt to this because um, as you know, pork rinds are pretty salty. So uh, just be aware of that. So mix all this up with a spatula. And then I've already done a terrible job of um, cutting uh, my parchment round. I didn't use my little trick that I normally do. I just cut it freehand and you can see how that turned out. But no matter, because this is gonna go right on here. You just don't want it to stick to your pizza pan. Get out of the way. I noticed that he used a glove, so I'm going to too, because that looked like it might make things easier. If I can get my big old fat hands in it. Wesley. That's pitiful. Cool. All right. Okay. And then this we're just going to press out into a thin crust pizza. And if you break it up, just push it back together. Like you said, this is, this is a fairly easy dough to work with. We're gonna try to work for, I think about a 12 inch circle, maybe, maybe a 10 inch. Here is our crust that we have thinned out. And now this is gonna go in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. So they're gonna get this guy good and crisp. So that's gonna go in now. And when we come back, we'll build this pizza out. So I'll meet you right back here in just a bit. All right, friends, we are back. And this hot little baby is out of the oven, as you can see here. And now it's just time to build this little pizza out. It did rise a little more than I kind of was anticipating. Maybe I should have spread it out a little bit further, but um, we're gonna see. All right, so uh, we're making these pizzas exactly like I did the other ones, just as simple as can be with just cheese and pepperoni and sauce. And again, we're using the Rayo's uh, homemade uh, pizza sauce. It's kind of pricey, but it is one of the lower carb ones. Um, I mentioned in the last one that Walmart also has a great value brand that is fairly low carb and low sugar. So a little bit of this on, kind of use it sparingly because this is where most, if not all of your carbs are gonna come from, at least in this recipe for sure. So spread this out. Okay, we've got our sauce on and now some little bit of shredded mozzarella. And lastly, just a few little pepperoni. Pepperonis. It looks so cute. Okay, it's that simple. So this goes back in the oven for about 10 minutes. And um, then we're gonna let it cool for five and we're gonna test it. And I will rate it just like I did in the last video with the three T's. Taste, texture, and time. Does it taste good? Is the texture nice? And was it worth the time and effort that it took to make it? All right, so I'll meet you back here in just a few minutes. All right, guys, we are back and look at this beautiful little pizza. That thing is so cute. Um, so I would imagine this is probably one serving. He doesn't say that, but considering the carb count is so low on the crust, I could see getting away with it. So let's, uh, let's transfer this over to our cutting board and let's give it a, ooh, simmer down. Everybody calm down. 
um, <laughs> let's give this a, a quick taste. And I'm gonna, it's cooled for about five minutes. And I'm just gonna take a slice here and let's see how this looks. Is right nice and it's got a, a decent little rise on it I don't know if you can see that the camera may not let you see that now let's see what the bottom looks like kind of looks almost like fat head dough but um, and it holds up pretty well now in my defense uh, in his Papa G's video, he when he picked up his slice, he used two hands to pick it up to stop it from flopping over. So, all right, let's give it a taste. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Okay. That is quite good. Um, I was expecting it to be crispier. And um, I know some of you mentioned in the comments below in the last video that you use pizza pans that have little holes in it to, and that helps crisp things up. So if you, these are just cheap, cheap little aluminum pans that I have. So if you have a good recommendation, leave a link down below in the comments for all of us so we can, we can all uh, grab one of the, one of, tried and true tested. This is really tasty. Um, it almost feels like a cross between the fat head and the chicken crust on our last video. Okay, taste, I'm gonna give this um, an eight. It is really good and notice he also added the garlic powder and the Italian seasoning, which I think we kind of all agreed on in the last video is a good thing to add to any pizza crust. It just it bumps up some flavor. So that's good for the texture. Um, I'm gonna give this a seven. I could have used it to be a little bit crispier, but uh, that's just personal preference. But it, as it is, it's really nice and it's, let me see, I, I've got two microphones on today, so I don't know which one. You can see how it's, you know, the edge crust is pretty good. Um, the time and effort, I was gonna give it a lower score than I'm going to because of the pork rinds, they had to be, I, need, I had to get out a food processor to process the pork rinds. But if you already have, a lot of people buy uh, pork panko, like it's it basically is already ground breadcrumbs. If you had that, you wouldn't have to worry with it. And a lot of people just keep their appliances out and it's not a big deal. I have to keep mine under storage. So it's a little bit to pull out that. So I, long story short, I'm gonna give this a seven for time. So that was taste, texture, and time so this is very good be sure to go check out uh, Papa G's low carb it's gonna be here on the screen and uh, and try this out and tell me what you think okay so now we're gonna do our second recipe I'm gonna get cleaned up here and I will meet you right back here all right see you in just a bit all right guys we're back now to start our second recipe and this was one of the probably the most requested um, recipes on the last video uh, in the comments and this is by um, the fabulous Maria Emrich and uh, MariaMindBodyHealth.com and this is her carnivore pizza crust and um, to be honest with you, speaking of, of, of recommendations, uh, I had so many in the last video that I could probably make 10 of these pizza battle videos, but I'm not gonna go that crazy, but I could definitely do one more. So let me know in the comments below. If you want me to just stop at these two videos and move along to something else, uh, that's fine too, but I could probably get one more uh, video in and, and catch all of the really popular ones that you guys have requested. So let's get started on this. This is essentially fat head dough without a nut flour. She replaces the nut flour with uh, pork rinds. So we're gonna start with some mozzarella cheese in a bowl. And then to that, we're gonna add, she said either butter or cream cheese. Uh, if you wanna know exactly how much, again, be sure to check the link down below and go to her website. Um, so I'm gonna use cream cheese because I already had cream cheese open from our last pizza battle and needed to use it. So this is gonna go in the microwave for one to two minutes until it's fully melted and then I'm gonna stir it and I'll meet you right back here. One minute, 37 seconds later. All right, so we're back and that melted nicely and I'm just gonna give it a quick mix like she said. And then there are only a few other ingredients. That is the pork rinds, 
right? So this is already, I've already ground those up in the food processor. And a dash of salt, not much because uh, you know from the last recipe, pork rinds obviously have salt already in them. And an egg. And then that is it. I'm gonna use a, a stand mix, a hand mixer, she says. Hold on. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Use a hand mixer and give this a good mix. All right, so I don't know if you were able to catch that, but um, uh, I made a me quite a mess, and um, this was a little bit frustrating, not because of the recipe, but because of my equipment. You know, I always like to sh share with you guys stuff that I recommend, and one thing I can firmly not recommend is this Cuisinart um, uh, hand mixer. The low setting is way too fast, and I just slang pork rinds all the way across the house. So anyway, moving past that, take yourself a baking sheet, and some parchment paper, and she says to grease the parchment. So I'm just gonna give it a quick shot of olive oil, I mean of, of, of avocado oil. And then this goes out, and she says to use your hands and make this into a round. So I had to reheat this, so it is rather warm. But I'm just gonna use my hands, and it is greasy and oily because of all this cheese. And this is gonna make six servings, six slices, right? And the net carbs is 0.1 net carbs per slice because really, I mean, this is pork rinds and cheese and an egg, uh, and that is it. So there's not a lot of carbs there. So you just gotta count really the carbs that are gonna go on your toppings, right? She also calls for this to cook on a um, pizza stone which I don't have, uh, so I may have to increase the cooking time just a hair because it's only supposed to cook for five minutes at about 425. So I've got this about as thin, I think, as we can get it. And now with my very greasy hands, <laughs> I just wanna show it to you. Uh, we've got this uh, flattened out, and then this is gonna go in the oven for about five minutes. It's gonna come back out, and we're gonna build our pizza. So I'll meet you right back here in just a second. Okay guys, so we're back. I increased the time on this from five minutes to about eight minutes. And she said it just needs to get lightly golden. And so from here, we're just gonna build out this pizza. All right, so we're done here. This goes in the oven for 10 minutes. Look how beautiful that is. This goes in for about 10 minutes until it's nice and golden brown and crispy, and I will meet you back here in 10 minutes. All right, guys, we are back, and I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you that I have some concerns already, but I don't wanna speak too much. Now, it looks amazing. Um, I am concerned with its texture. Now. Um, this is sort of fat head based, right? It doesn't have nut dough, uh, nut flour, but it is a fat head dough essentially with pork rinds. In my last video, um, in the comments, several people commented that to make sure that their fat head pizzas stay crispy, when they come out of the oven, they put them on a wire cooling rack and not on the parchment that keeps it from sort of steaming itself. Well, I, t I attempted to do that with this one, but the pizza was so soft, even though it is rather brown, it was still so floppy and soft, I could not get it off of this parchment. So it is at least not cooled on the pan, but here we are. Um, and again, her instructions do say, if you, may, if you have a pizza stone, place it in the oven. And then later, if you are using a pizza stone, transfer the pizza from the parchment onto the pizza stone. Well, I don't have a pizza stone that the if implies that it can still be done on a pan, I, I think. So let's taste it and see how this comes out. Maybe I'm fussing and fretting over nothing. Um, let's get a piece of this. It really feels soft, guys, I'll be honest with you. So, oh yeah. This is, um, this is rather, <laughs> 
rather soft and I gotta say, I don't know if I'm gonna have to zoom in on that. Um, there is a lot of grease. Now, um, even you can see it on the, on the spatula. I mean, fathead dough is made out of mozzarella cheese and cream cheese. It is nothing but oil. And then to have, she said to oil, grease the parchment paper, which I did. That's just grease, grease, grease. Um, so maybe I just did something wrong. Let's look at the bottom of it. You can see it's rather shiny. Um, let's, let's taste it. Okay, here's the flop test. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Very tasty. Very tasty. I wish it had a little more structure to it. I do. I wish the interior were a little towards the center of the pizza or a, middle, a little more firmer like the crust was. But guys, I know that this is probably user error on my part. I'm not gonna blame the recipe. So many of you requested below that I make this and try it because you loved it. And I know Maria, um, mindbodyhealth.com, I know Maria Emmerich makes fantastic recipes. I've used lots of hers um, from books and from her blog, and they are all excellent. So I am not gonna say this is an issue with the recipe the way it turned out, it's probably user error. If you make this, give me some tips down below what I can do to crisp this up. And if I could have gotten it off of the parchment onto this, I think it would have crisped up. So let me know below um, what you do to make this good. And um, if we do another third video, perhaps I'll try to quickly remake it and let you know what I think. But as it is, the way I've made it here, taste is a nine. This thing is good. And it doesn't even have the um, uh, Italian seasoning or garlic powder or anything in the crust. It is a very flavorful pizza and tastes great. Texture. Um, the way I made it, I'm going to give it um, a five. I wish it could have been crispier. I'm sure it's something I did. Give me some tips down below. And then for time and effort, this is a little bit, if you have uh, panko, uh, pork panko breadcrumbs already and you don't have to grind them up, uh, then you're only using one appliance, the hand mixer. But I had to use two appliances, which it's not great. It's just two other things to wash just for pizza. So I'm gonna give it for time, I'm gonna give it um, a six. Uh, if you already have the panko breadcrumbs, then, then so be it, that'll be easier. And speaking of, I have not done it, but a lot of people, if you can't eat pork or don't want to eat pork uh, for whatever reason, a lot of people have recommended that uh, the chicken skin, instead of pork skins, it's chicken skins. I am bet you could do something like that with this. They're real crispy like that. You could grind them up and make a, make a chicken skin crust other than, so if you, if you don't want to uh, eat pork or can't eat pork, maybe that's an option for you. If you have done that, sound off down below. So we've got one more pizza. We're almost there. So hang tight, I'm gonna get set up and I'll meet you right back here. All right guys, let's do our third recipe now. We're almost finished. Um, so if Maria's uh, carnivore pizza crust was the highly, most highly requested in the last video, uh, video, this one is the second most requested. This is by Joe Duff, thedietchefs.com. This is keto pizza in 10 minutes, better than fathead crust keto pizza. All right, so let's get started on this. And it's got some more ingredients than our others. So we're gonna take that into account when we consider time. Um, but we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. And we're gonna start here with almond flour. Now, um, obviously, he doesn't say to sift it, but y'all know me, sift, right? Sift, sift, sift. So this is some coconut flour. So we've got almond and coconut flour. And this is a little bit of a secret ingredient. This is unflavored whey protein powder. Um, if you go to his link down below for the measurements, he will also give you instructions if you don't have whey protein powder, instructions to make this without that. But this is the way the main recipe is. So that's what we're gonna go with. To this, we're also gonna add some xanthan gum, just a small amount. Uh, you know how I kind of feel about xanthan gum, but in such small amounts, it can be helpful. And this is a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, and this is baking powder. And in that goes. And lastly, just a pinch of salt, he said. So that should be plenty. And now let's sift all this together. All 
All right, so make sure this is combined well by whisking it. You just wanna make sure that that, particularly the xanthan gum and the um, baking powder are well dispersed. And then we're also gonna add to this a couple of eggs. I'm just gonna beat them real quick. Boy, those yolks are beautiful. Get out of the way. And we're gonna add a little bit of melted coconut oil. I already have liquid coconut oil. Um, so I'm gonna use that. From here, use a spatula and just pull this together into a dough ball. Okay, so we've got our parchment on our workspace. Let me get rid of this big bowl. Get out of the way. And from here, we're gonna do exactly as you think we're gonna do. Parchment on top. And he said to roll this out into about a 14 inch circle. And then we're gonna make a little uh, edge on the crust by rolling it over. So it'll eventually wind up at about 12 inches, but roll this out to about 14 inches, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna transfer this over to, without breaking it, well, I just did, didn't I? Without breaking it, put that back together. Um, transfer it to a baking sheet, and then from here, this goes into a 425 degree oven, and he says for three minutes. <laughs> he said if you used the protein powder for three minutes, if you didn't use the protein powder and used his other extra almond flour to do it for five minutes. I don't know how three minutes is gonna be enough, but Joe Duff said it, so I guess it's meant to be. So in this goes for about three minutes, and then we're gonna come back, build the pizza and bake it. So I'll see you back here just in a couple of minutes. Okay, this has been exactly three minutes. It has puffed up rather nicely. I'm surprised that it did so much in just three short minutes, but there you go. So let's just build out this pizza the same way we did all of our others. Okay, so this is gonna go back in the oven and he says to switch it to the broiler. So we're gonna put this under the broiler. I would think that the bottom needs to get crispy, but that's what he said. So we're gonna put this in about 10 minutes or until the cheese is melted, he said. So I will meet you back here and we will taste this and wrap this guy up. All right, see you in just a bit. All right, guys, we are back. And truthfully, this only took about eight minutes total because it only took about five minutes after uh, I put it in the oven and it looks beautiful. Now, um, while the other recipes did make claims about how good and tasty their pizza was, Joe uh, Duff at, at um, thedietchefs.com, he makes some claims here. Uh, this crust is made with almond flour. It is so much better than fathead pizza crust. This pizza crust actually gets crispy and crunchy like real pizza crust does. So we're gonna find out those are some bold claims. As you can see, the, uh, the oven was hot on the broil side of the setting, so we, our, our parchment turned a little dark, but never mind that. Let's see what this is like. Uh, so again, I put it in for three minutes for the crust, and then in about five minutes, uh, this is the way it came out of the oven after it went under the broiler. Um, okay. I'm just gonna get a smaller piece. Now let's think about this for a minute also. This is three net carbs per slice and you're supposed to get eight slices out of this. So the first crust, the first pizza, you ate the whole pizza by itself and it was one and a half net carbs for the crust, not your toppings. The second pizza, the per slice was 0.1, like just negative, might as well be zero net carbs per slice for just the crust. This is three net carbs per slice, just the crust. So if you're thinking you're gonna eat this whole pizza, that's 27 grams of net carbs, just the crust before you even talk about sauce and toppings. So let that be a warning, I'm just gonna say that. All right, so let's pick this up. Ooh. Looks good, smells good. It holds up pretty well. If you look at the back of it, it's a little bit pale. I honestly think we could have um, 
I'm about to lose my battery on my overhead camera. I hope it lasts. I hope, uh, let's just taste it. It's really good. Okay, it is good. Um, it doesn't have as much flavor. The, the outside of the crust is, but the in that's not crispy to me. So I feel like it should have baked more than just the three minutes uh, that it called for on the pre-bake before you put the toppings on. I feel like that would have gotten it more crispy, but I followed the directions exactly like it said. I even measured it out by the gram and I even have a, a thermometer in my oven to test oven temperature. So this was exactly as the recipe was written and it is good, but I would not call it crispy or exactly like pizza crust. No, I wouldn't. But it is good. Hi guys, Editing Wes here. I was concerned that this wasn't as crispy as I felt it should have been, so I went back to look at the original uh, video recipe, and he also appears to have a little difficulty lifting it off the pan, and it is perhaps is not as crispy as the description made it sound. So just wanted to put that out there. So, so at the three T's, taste, it needed something, uh, some garlic powder. It did have garlic powder and onion powder. I would have probably put some um, uh, Italian seasoning in it. Uh, I would give the taste um, a seven. I'll go with a seven. I'll give the texture a six. I think if I baked it a little bit longer, if you guys make this and the ones who recommended it so much, what do you do? Do you bake it longer than he said? It literally says total cook time, seven minutes. That's for the par baked crust and then putting it in the oven. So I just don't know how that's possible, but. And then for time, I'll give it um, I'll give it another seven because there were no appliances needed and it went together pretty quickly. There were a lot of ingredients, but it went together pretty quickly. So uh, there you have it, folks. Low carb pizza. Can it be done? You better believe it. We proved it again. Some are better than others. It's all just a personal taste. So sound off below if you want me to do another one of these videos. I'll do one more. We'll do a third one if you guys want it. Let me know down below what I should test, which recipes I should test. If I have, should redo any of these, let me know that as well. I'll just make a quick um, uh, fast forward of them and we can try them that way. So otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining me. I say it every time, but these videos are a way for me to maintain my low carb way of eating. And looking in the end of that camera as often as I can helps keep me honest. So I appreciate that you have come along for the journey. Thank you so much. If you haven't found me on Instagram or on Facebook yet, Head on over there now. I'm on uh, just highfalutin low carb on Instagram and Facebook. I communicate a little more freely and a little more frequently there. Um, also, I need to give another huge thank you to my sponsor, Thrive Market, for sponsoring this video. Um, you guys use the link down here on the screen, thrivemarket.com slash highfalutin low carb. If you will use that, you will get 25% off your first order. That's off of the already discounted prices, 25% off and a free gift. So be sure to check that out. Um, like I said, I use them regularly and I really like getting it delivered right to my front door and the hands-off delivery and I don't have to go fight for the grocery store and I save money. So it's a huge boon. So thank you so much Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. I say it every time, these sponsorships like yours are what keep channels like mine on the air. So I really appreciate it. Lastly, these names here that you're gonna see on the screen, those are my Patreon members and they are true rock stars here. Without them, none of this would be possible. If you don't know what Patreon is, think of it as the tip jar for the internet. It allows people like you who enjoy what people like me do here on YouTube and you give a dollar or two a month just to sort of keep the train on the tracks as it were. So be sure to check that out and thank you to all these guys and gals for all of their help. All right, I love you guys. I'll see you very soon, probably for another pizza battle. All right, love you. Bye-bye.